presentation is for me. I think I'm slightly using a bit more time. Uh, I'm going to do a presentation about wireless sensor networks. That is an issue which is coming on even more often than you think, maybe. Uh, I'm going to do a short introduction, and in the introduction I'm going to tell something about uh, the environment where we are doing the projects in. Uh, there is a lot of theoretical background. I found a lot of stuff about wireless sensor networks, but only in theory. Uh, if you're going to look for these topics, there is almost nothing to find in a practical sense. So, the practical stuff we have to do still ourselves. And at the end, I have some time for questions. Uh, so this is the introduction part. Um, first have a look, a, a short look to uh, the projects we have been built in the Netherlands. It's about Alzheimer's. Uh, one issue for Alzheimer's disease is that you have to do things with activities from daily life. Um, another issue for the, for the patients is uh, that they, have, they should have a, a real easy device to handle. Uh, so we should be very close to them with the technologies. So I don't think they can handle Arduino or device or whatever. So we have chosen for tablets. Uh, then the next issue in there was, okay, if you are doing things in daily life and you want to, to do some measurements, what have you to measure? Uh, what do you do with all the data you're collecting? Uh, the way for... Uh, collecting the data for uh, finding out what is, what is happening, uh, you can do quite easily with all kinds of sensors. Uh, so then you have to know something about sensor communication, then you have to know something about collecting the data. So that is uh, what the projects were about. Uh, so we all did some crawling on the web. Also, the students did some crawling on the web. Find out what's, what is Alzheimer's really about. Uh, one thing I found out for myself are quite a lot of issues about the human computer interaction. Uh, looking for the case from the UK, who did something about. I can't find them. Okay, it's not in them, probably. Uh, for computer, human computer interaction. There is a lot to do about that, uh, because how should you address some... There you are. Me? Yeah, yeah. about human computer interaction. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking for you. <laughs> Couldn't find you. Uh, we have to find out something about programming an Android tablet, or how to build apps. Uh, how you have to connect devices to a tablet, that is one point we have to do still. Okay, and the last thing I have been crawling around for is for wireless sensor networks. So this is a short one for, for Alzheimer's disease. I'm not going to read every line. You can find the presentation also on the website. So if you want to, to know more about Alzheimer's disease, this is uh, a wrap-up for Alzheimer's diseases. So have a look at it. Um, this is another one I found, and this is about uh, what is happening if you are running in a communication. And that can be communication between human to human, that can be communication from human to machine. And even, but then you have to force it a bit, it can be machine to machine. When you are not following this kind of protocols. This is, in fact, also a stack of protocols that you are using in human to human communication. And because everyone is known and familiar with human-to-human -human communication, if you have to do some human-to-machine communication or machine-to-human communication, you should stay close to that. Uh, so you have five steps which you want to be taken care of. So uh, the first thing is what should be said. So if you are measuring data, which data from the input should be transferred to the system, or the other way around, which data from the system should be transferred to 
the user. We did something about feedback from uh, the tablet to the user, and that should be um, in a way that the user can understand what the, what the machine is telling him. Uh, so in that case, you should also know who is the audience. So what is the target group of your application you are building, or the, the thing which you are building. So you have to know which kind of people are involved in there. Uh, then you have to select the channel. That was not a big issue for us, because we are using tablets for communication, so the tablet was the communication channel. Uh, how should the message be stated? So we have to do some research on the way people are accepting messages from a system or can give uh, feedback to the system as being used. And at the end you should also take care about the last point. So what is the effect of the message you are sending to, uh, to the user uh, on the user itself. So if you are uh, looking at the progress for Alzheimer's disease for instance, should you tell the patient, okay, your level is sinking now 20% in comparison with last month or something. Or maybe that it's a bit too heavy for them. So you should also consider, for, okay, if I'm sending a message, what is the impact of, of that, that message to the user of your application? This is not my own thing, I found it somewhere on the internet. Uh, okay, about wireless sensor networks. This is a definition I found at Wikipedia about wireless sensor networks. So, a wireless sensor network is straight, etc., etc., etc. I can keep shut my mouth for half a minute and then you can read it yourself, or should I read it for you? I think you'll finish reading. <coughs> so, in uh, wireless sensor networks, you want to send things. So you need sensors. So if you're going to look for sensors, you will find really hundreds of them. So this is only a summary of the sensors I have found, but the list is really, I've counted the list, although I let the computer count the list, I'm not counting things if the computer can do that for me. I found out it is more than 400 in one list, and that is only one list I found. So the, I think if you're going to have a look in the internet, you will find several lists of them. Okay. So, the next question is, which kind of measurements do you want to do? So we're fo focusing on healthcare, on demotics, and on the personal environment. And once back to one of the previous slides, we're looking for activities from daily life. So you can bring down the list of 400 to a couple of dozens or so. So which sensors do we have? Which sensors do you need to measure the things from daily life you want to have in your application? Then from out of the IT part, we have some other interests, of course. Uh, we are working with autonomous sensors. Uh, we are measuring physical and environmental uh, conditions. The sensors themselves should pass the data cooperatively. So if the sensor is sensing something, measuring something, it should be capable to send it over the wireless sensor network itself. Uh, it is a complete network, and the end of the network is a sync. So that's the node which is connected to a, a fixed part of the network. So there the data is collected, and then the, lab, the data is sent on to the rest of your network, and if it's a wireless network or a fixed network, cable network, doesn't matter that much. Uh, okay, not everything. So about the sensor itself, if you're looking at the blueprint of a sensor, then you have uh, a couple of <coughs> parts in there. So you have a wireless communication interface, so the radio. Uh, you have a processor with some memory in there. You have the sensor itself, it should send information to the processor, and there is some power storage you need to, to get it at work. Without power, it's not working. And then, 
you should take care of some device to get the power to the machine. Uh, if you have a sensor, then a sensing, processing, and communication I've told about. Um, in a network, especially in a wireless network, uh, there are all kinds of problems you can face. Um, you have to deal with most of the problems. Um, so there are a lot of failures possible in there. So you have to find ways to make the, the, the errors which are existing as low as possible or even you should be able to resolve the problems. Um, radios especially are using a lot of energy, so you need something to feed the system. Uh, because it's a very small processor and a very less uh, amount of memory, uh, you have all kinds of resource limitations. And furthermore, if you're looking to the, to the wireless sensor networks, you will find an enormous way of building the networks. So uh, there are quite a lot of manufacturers <coughs> of wireless sensors and they are building the network all in a different way. So you can find them back and about two uh, possibilities. The one is the... Sorry. Okay. I find the back. This one. Uh, you, will, you can combine them in a layered a layer architecture or a cluster architecture. That is mainly the big difference you will find in there. Um, so about the sensors itself. If you're looking at the sensors, then you can use the sensors for an enormous amount of things. So we're focusing on the healthcare part, but that is not that we're not using other parts because when we are doing something as home care, so maybe uh, you will find also something like the environment you want to monitor. So we are focusing on this, but there are a lot of other possibilities we have to take care of as well. Uh, I was telling you that we have two ways of naming the networks. Um, that's the next slide. Um, <coughs> this is how the network is working. So if you have a wireless sensor network, so all, all nodes are drawn in over there, the square in the one in the, in the middle, that's the sink, that's the center of your network. So all the nodes should pass their data to the sink. And that can be in one step, that can be in two steps, that can be in three steps or even more. Depends on the distance between the node and the, uh, the sink of your network. Um, for a single hop, they should be close by. This is a lower transmission rate because the further you are from, uh, from the access point, I think you know that for yourself. If you're quite far away from your access point, your uh, throughput will stink almost to the bottom. You have experienced something in the hostile, I think, as well. So if there are a lot of users of the access point, then your uh, transmission rate will drop as well. Um, if you are using a multi hop then you can have a higher transmission rate because the nodes are closer to each other, so they can pass data, they can pass more data at the same time. Uh, but that means immediately that if a node is doing the sending or the receiving of a block of data, it is not able to sense at the same moment. So, in, in Dutch we have a famous football player named Johan Cruijff and uh, he's telling every now and then that every advantage has his own disadvantage or the other way around, I always forget about it I don't know very much more about football, sorry um, so it should be sent through a network so the network is partly wired, partly wireless. Uh, if you're looking to uh, the situation itself, to the wireless sensor network, uh, that is a separate network. It's running other uh, protocols, so it's not the same as your wireless network. Uh, 
which you were using at home, for instance. Um, in a wireless network, in the sensor network, there should be some routing involved. There should be some extra protocols in use there, because if you are going to route in a network, who has done CCNA, for instance? Who has done CCNA? Only one? No, it's a big one. So you, you know what I'm talking about when I'm, talk, when I'm telling you, that, okay, there are some other protocols running there in a routing situation. Uh, so you have a lot of different protocols running over there to make it work. Uh, if you have a normal situation, then you can take your laptop and walk around, and then there is something like a roaming, but then the laptop is only, the only need for the laptop is to keep contact with one of the access points. If you are doing, trying to do the same in a wireless network, wireless sensor network, sorry, then uh, there is more to focus on because you want to be sure where the, where the nodes are, for instance. Um, for the rest, you have some real-time communication because you are not sensing for gathering data and then storing it a week later or something. It should be done in real time. Um, just did something about quality of service. That's involved as well in here. And there is something with security. With, because if you are sending things through the air, then you should also be able to pick it up. So that is all uh, involved in uh, this kind of networking. Um, OK, what does it look like? Uh, I found out how the system was working. So you can enlighten and enlarge. There is more to do with the things. Come on. So these are the sensors. It is uh, some stack of boards. And the, the very large black thing is the battery container for the moment. So I don't think these ones can be used in the real environment. So this is only like prototyping or proof of concept. And then it should be developed a bit further. So, I have the same pictures in here. Um, so, what is on? There is a CPU, there is a, uh, there is a memory, there is a radio. And then, <coughs> placed upon that part, you will have some other features as sensors or as uh, what, what you need to make it a sync. So, for this one, it's just a USB cable. But there are also other possibilities. Um, about the software, that is a bit more complicated. There is a lot to do in the software part. There are stacks of protocols you have to use. Uh, so there is an operating system. And if you're looking at the, at the network stack, you have to do something with Mac layers. More than the Mac layers you are known for, for the layer 2. Uh, network layer aspects. But do you have to do over there transport layer aspects and application layer aspects? So there is a lot to do in there. In fact, the complete OC stack is on that four lines, TCP IP stack. But well, it should be the same. So what equipment are we using? We are in the whole project we are working with a tablet, we are working with static computers or laptops, we are working with a wireless network or sending data over. We have to work with a server for monitoring systems. But we were focusing in this presentation and in the project itself. In the project itself, we are focusing on, uh, on the tablet itself. In this presentation, I'm only focusing at the wireless sensor network part. So this is what is in a wireless sensor. Uh, when you're looking at the node, you have some sensor technologies. You have a tiny battery-driven computer. So the computer is also on one of the boards. Uh, you have a wireless com uh, communication interface. That is, I think in this case, it's Zigbee. 
um, you have to organize the things in a network so they should be able to send and receive information from each other and to each other. Uh, they have to sense things. They should act as a router. And they should uh, forward the data itself. So, back to the blueprint. You will find, find the five uh, basic parts of the wireless sensor network in the sensor itself. And for the rest, it's the combination of all the sensors connected to something else. Uh, this is also something I found on the internet. This is a branch of families which all are involved in the wireless sensor techniques. I'm not going to do all of them. I've picked out a couple of them. Uh, when you're looking at sensors, you can organize your sensors in two ways. You can do it in a clustered way, so every cluster of sensors has its own sink, in fact, and the sink is connected to a, a base station, to a super sink, and that's about it. This is how a cluster network is working. This is a layered architecture. If you are close enough to the base station, you have one hop communication. If you are a bit further away, you have two hop, a three hop, etc. etc. Uh, hopefully, it's not doing rip because then you are ending up with only 15 layers, and maybe you need some more. Uh, you need an, a protocol to run the stuff, uh, and you have to integrate a couple of uh, network operations, so network initialization and maintenance, you have the MAC protocol, which you have to take care of, and you have the routing protocol, which is doing things for you. So this is the network initialization and maintenance protocol, so this is what is being used for set up, setting up the network and for maintaining the network. So the upper ones are done for the first time, of course, for setting up the network. And then the last part is more for what should be done if you are uh, propagating your network and if the network is in, uh, in, in an always changing state. Because this is the situation if you are doing a wireless sensor network. The routing protocol itself. So uh, the information should be routed through your wireless sensor network and um, the, the, the way the routing protocol is working is a bit related to OSPF. I think everyone knows about OSPF. Who doesn't know about OSPF? Everyone? You don't know about OSPF? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. You don't need to know just to switch a little bit. Um, okay, OSPF is a routing protocol which is looking at the, uh, the status of the links and if the status of the link is on so there is a link then it's going to use the link and when there is no link the routing protocol is finding another way to the destination um, you are all doing uh, mathematics in some fashion no? yes? <laughs> you are familiar with the Dijkstra algorithm? Huh? Okay. So the Dijkstra algorithm is something which is used to make the OSPF running. Who is using? Uh, who is driving a car? Who is driving a car? Do you, do you have so such so, so a nice device on your dashboard which is pointing you in which direction you are going? Navigation system. No. No. Who is using a navigation system? Do you know which protocol is being used for navigation systems? Although, which algorithm is being used for navigation system? Exactly the same, it's the Dijkstra algorithm. So everyone is using the Dijkstra algorithm, even if you don't know about it. Uh, so that is the routing protocol. Um, so the first part I have already told about. Uh, they should find their way through the network, so depending on the status of each node, there will be found a way through the network. Uh, 
we have to take care of the power consumption, of course, because that is really an issue in this kind of uh, situations. Um, you have to find out which node should be sending information to the next hop. Because if I'm sending information into the rack, I, I want to send information to the sink. But I don't know where the sink is, so I'm going to broadcast my information. So every node in my environment is receiving that information. So let's say that there are four different other nodes who are receiving my information. That four nodes are going to broadcast the information to the next layer. And to each other, if they are close enough to each other. And back to me, if I'm still in the same situation, in the same location. And then every node which has received that message is going to send it around. Again, you're familiar with the term uh, broadcast storm? It's a layer two story, broadcast storms. Have you ever seen a broadcast storm? You have a switch and all lights are only flashing and nothing can be done anymore. What is the solution? Just pull the plug and leave the network die quietly and then power it up again. So that can't be done in here because I'm sensing real-time information and I want to store the real-time information somewhere. So if there are too many nodes sending the information at the same time, I can't power down the system. Something else? Then I have to power down every single node. No possibility. So next to the routing protocol itself needs something else. Uh, so in between, there are a uh, lot of other things to do. This is about the power consumption. If you have a node and it's sending every time, every now and then, all kind of information to the other nodes, then the power consumption is also raising. So you have to do something smart with the power consumption. Uh, so they should find out the location to each other and then find out a nice way to communicate only with the other nodes which are involved in the communication. So not broadcast the information but send it to a specific node. Uh, and then you can do something about power consumption. This is, in, in fact, it is uh, what we are doing, what you are trying to do if you are running a wire sensor network to bring down the power consumption. Um, I think I've told this already. So you have all kinds of merits and demerits. Uh, it's always nice to have more merits and demerits. So in this case, I have three negatives and two positives, so it's a bit the other way around. Uh, so you're going to use wireless sensor network to sense information, so uh, they can find each other. Uh, but you have to take care of that uh, the situation should be mobile, so that is standing here as a demerit, so we have to take care of that. It, it is possible to do so. Uh, there is one thing which is really an issue, because there is no mechanism to update the situation on the boards. So this is the only thing you have. <coughs> one board. And you can do something to find out which chip is on, but how are you going to send a new operating system on this device. So this is a processor, this is a radio, and that's about it. So memory. Data should be should be sent in a proper way. Um, so if you are doing some data sending in here, there is some data coming in. So you have to find out which data is coming in. Uh, there is also traffic coming in from other nodes. Uh, 
you should take care of the energy the, the energy consumption for uh, not only for sensing but also for distributing the data. Uh, and this one, this was I was pointing to this one just before already. In fact, uh, you have to reduce the congestion of your network in some new way because in a normal situation, if you're a bit familiar with routing protocols, the routing protocol itself is taking care of it. But because of the nodes are moving around, you can't be sure about only one routing protocol running in here. So you need a bit more. Uh, so in the medium access control, that's slightly different as the map layer in the OC model. Um, of course you have some framing and DNN encapsulation problems to solve. Uh, you have the medium access itself, so find access to the radio, let's say. Uh, there should be something done in reliability, so if you are sending out frames, then you have to be sure that the frames are sent properly. Uh, there is something with flow control, so you have to find out if there are if every packet which you are sending is also being received. And there is something to do with error control, because if I'm sending information about a health situation, for instance, then it's very bad when some of the bits are flapping and giving other information through as meant to be. Uh, this is something new in the network technologies. So first, nodes should be aware of the distance between each other. And then they have to compute not only the distance between each other, but also the location, the relative, uh, the, the relative position against each other. So I saw several projects in here trying to do the same kind of things with Bluetooth, I think. Triangular uh, calculations to find out the relative position to the next station or the next node or the next device you are using. So it's inside of this system already. Uh, and then at the end, if you, are, if you, know, if you know the, the exact location of the sink, then you can find out which is the absolute location of the device you are looking at. Uh, there are a lot of things to do more in the sensor network, in the wireless sensor network uh, part of, of the game. So I didn't do anything about the quality of network, network coverage. So if I'm having five sensors, is this enough for this room? I don't know. Uh, I didn't do anything about security. So yes, all information what which I should send in this case is insecure. So we have to take care about security as well. Um, I don't know even if we are covering what we need about real-time co communication. And for sure, I have forgotten a couple of hours in here. So my conclusion. We are close to the Internet of Things. So what can we do? We can acquire data over a network, over a wireless sensor network. Uh, you can report alarms. Uh, you can automatically forward information through your system, through your wireless sensor network. Uh, you can extend the Internet to the real-time world. Now, I, I think it's uh, still a bit too big. But they can be a bit closer. I have found a picture on the internet, and I think it's a blueprint print of another uh, of another sensor. But they're shrinking a bit. Uh, you have an autonomous information system. If you have all kinds of these nodes connected to each other, then all together are forming an information system. It is updating themselves. If, if you're in a wireless sensor network, the sensors are moving around. So every now and then, the sensor should find out its location again, its exact location. Uh, they're going to synchronize to each other, to the monitor system. So this is what we can do with this technology. Uh, we can build near real-time information systems. So you can prevent abnormal behavior. So 
in a health situation, you can see before something is going to happen that it is going to happen. If you're uh, falling asleep and at the top of, of the stairs, for instance, then you know already, okay, there can be a dangerous situation in here. Uh, you can prevent malfunction of, in, of situations because, because you can see that uh, something is going to happen already. It's quite hard to do. Uh, for instance, they are looking all eight, for, for ages for uh, seeing in, in advance when there is an earthquake. So the only thing they can be sure for is that if they are looking to the animals, they know very shortly before the earthquake that there is going something to happen. So we have to catch that in this kind of situations as well. Uh, it can be used in, the, in dangerous situations. So if, uh, if you have, uh, for instance, uh, a power plant, you can see, OK, there is leaking some liquid. So you have to do something before it's going to start a fire. Uh, typical domains, home care and e-health, or e-health, environmental monitoring. So you can also monitor uh, a plant, for instance. Uh, what is going on in the plant. Uh, just before I came here, I had a discussion with someone who is doing his IP uh, in his individual project uh, on a, a, a gas station, gasoline station, not where you're filling your car, but a bit larger one. Uh, so they have to sense all cranes, all taps on the, on the site. So you can do that also with wireless sensor network. Uh, factory automation has been doing a lot of, uh, for a long time already, but not in, with wireless sensor networks. They are doing something else, but you can extend it to wireless sensor networks, supplies, etc. There are, uh, there are a, lot, a lot more possibilities in there. So, the things I have bought are from Call Census. Call Census is a company in Germany. They were offering a classroom kit for a really reasonable price. If you're looking at the other ones, uh, I found several of them, and there is a, dif there is a deviation in there from, uh, let's say, one to three. So when I was buying the, stuff, the same stuff at another company, I, was, I had to pay three times as much. Alcohol Census was a nice one to do uh, these things with the classroom kit only. Uh, it are quite a lot of modules. I brought only two. We were a bit late in uh, the delivery part of the of the whole structure, so hopefully some some other uh, of the sensors are waiting for me at home. Um, you can uh, you can do almost anything with it. Uh, they have um, uh, also a lot of. of uh, complete solution so you can wire your whole room and then find out what is happening in your room uh, there are also uh, nice add-ons for powering your system so you can put on a, a, what is it? a solar system on it and then the solar system is powering your system uh, it's looking quite large but it's also this kind of size uh, they have all kinds of extra devices to plug it into your uh, into your own network, so USB cable or so dongle or whatever you need extra for it. Uh, skip this one. Uh, this is what we are facing. We were facing. So for the environment, we are looking at health and Alzheimer's. Uh, for doing the projects, we were looking at the motives about and, and for wireless sensor networks. Uh, for the real hard IT, we used in, uh, a tablet and an internet connection. And the main question in there was, okay, how can we add some value to the life of a patient with, who is suffering from, from Alzheimer's? So what is next? This is, I think, a blueprint of an, a sensor. So the size is only 1.5 millimeters 
by two millimeters by half a millimeter. So it should, there should fit a couple of them on my nail. But I think this is a bit future. And then maybe you have questions. <laughs>